Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you another travel inspiration photo book video. And this time is going to be something very special, a book that I handmade myself. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. If you're a regular follower, you know what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show my photo book from the very beginning to the very end, talk about the design elements and just show you the book in general so you can get some inspiration from it for your next project or, you know, just gather some ideas. Now, this book is extra special to me because not only I made a design for the inside of the book, but this is the very first photo book that I made myself with my own hands. So I printed out the pages, I bound them into a book, I made the cover myself and I put the whole thing together. It was quite a lengthy process, but it was really worth it. It made me really happy and I'm chuffed with the results. Of course, I filmed the entire process and I already edited the video. So after this video, I'm going to publish the video of how I made this photo book so you can see the entire process step-by-step -step tutorial if you want to do one for yourself or if you're just interested how a photo book is made. So let's dive in. So this photo book was created from my trip to Southeast Asia in 2018. I made a photo book with these photos before, but the main reason why I wanted to do something with my hands, something homemade, was to add some elements that I couldn't see with any photo book company and also to have a little bit more freedom. Once you make something with your own hands, you've got so much more flexibility and you can change things on the go. Of course, there are some limitations as well because we don't have the same kind of machinery and um, equipment as a huge photo book company, but more on this in my how to make a photo book video next week. So the cover for this book, as you can see, is linen and I printed on the cover and the back is blank. This is, of course, a hardcover book and let's start. So it starts with a double page black spread and then the book starts here. Now, as you can see, the book is stitched, but it still lays flat. So this is kind of a traditional book binding where the book can stay fully flat despite not being technically seamlessly flat. Now the first thing you'll see in this book is this vellum paper and this is the main reason why I wanted to create these photo books um, with my own hands because they add such a nice element to the book you'll see later on. So the first page is my title page. As you can see in this book I chose a very elegant kind of classic look. So serif fonts all the way through and some color changes. This is the contents of my book and I have page numbers as well so I can find things quickly and easily. And on the screen you'll see now the fonts that I was using in this book. On the next page you'll see my first map which is the map of my entire trip. I made this map very minimalist so as you can see there's nothing really on the map apart from the shapes of the countries and you can see my journey starting and going in this direction and next to each country you can see a little flag and also the date of when I got to that specific city. In the bottom here you can see how many miles I traveled and there is a page number as well. For this photo book I decided to stick with very kind of pastel colors, beige and some blue because I feel like it goes really well with the photos inside the book. By the way this map style is going to be available in the travel map creator as well if you want to create one for your own photo book. Here I've got a page of itinerary, so you can see every single day what I did, where I flew, what time I got there and so on. I think this is really good for travel photo books because you don't need to look up in emails and messages where you were, you can just have a nice table of the entire journey and then you know you can always see what kind of flights you took, what you did on specific days and it helps to lay out the photo book as well. Now here is my favorite thing about the vellum paper. So as you can see, you can print the map and the titles on the vellum paper and because it's transparent, you can kind of overexpose it or layer it on top of a photo of the country. So here is my favorite photo from Sri Lanka and then the Sri Lankan map is going to be above that. And here are the locations I visited in Sri Lanka. So Colombo, Negombo and Wilpatu and a little map of the country. And you can still see the photo behind, but you can see the map as well. And this is what really made me want to do this book in this way. 
So this is my design that I chose for the beginning of a destination. So on the side, you can see the straight line going on. Here I've got the date and this is a sans serif font and it says day two of my journey and the actual date on the side. And here I've got the same titles as on the front uh, or the first page of the book and I have a little story about the first destination. Again, for here I chose serif fonts and I made them italic and also I wanted to make it slightly thinner than the page so it sits nicely in the middle and I wanted to play a bit around with white space. Now I put a photo in the bottom, the start of the journey in the national park. And as you can see, I'm using here some very faded pastel color, watercolor elements, just to embellish the page and give a little bit of color to the book. Now here is my first page with photos. On this page, I decided to go with a wide border to stick with the classic elements. And you'll see this is going to stay throughout the book. And here is another design element where the, the photos go across two pages. And as you can see, the stitching actually works really well for these kind of pages. On some pages, it's not going to be perfect, but mostly it stays flat and you can see the photo all across. Here is again another watercolor element, uh, the page number in the bottom, and another little photo of the elephants, the happy elephant. And again, here I've got some description for the photos and here I chose again um, a red, slightly bigger text with uh, capital letters and the same text as from the first page of the destination and some watercolor elements around. Again, as you can see, there's quite a lot of white space because I really want to stress this classic look in this book. Here is my first double page spread photo. I used quite a few of these in this book to showcase my favorite shots. And the good thing about this is that when you actually create the book, you can kind of put these pages into the middle of a signature. So it flows around the two pages. And the only thing you'll see here is the stitching, but that doesn't bother me at all. And again, here is a little description of the photo. This is one of my slightly newer designs where I wanted to play around with shapes and some random kind of organization of my photos. So I'm using this kind of layout in the book quite a lot where I just randomly started putting boxes all around of different sizes and shapes and see what happens. Sometimes it worked really well, sometimes it didn't, but you can just change it as many times as you need to until you get the look that you want. So these are my jungle creatures, the animals I managed to get a snap of from the Jeep. And here is another double page spread of one of my favorite shots of the lake. It was beautiful. It was such a peaceful morning in Wilpatu National Park. Going on, here is the spotted deer. Um, they were so sweet and they look so happy just playing around and running around. And every time you approach them, they just stand still and listen. It's just really sweet. Now here is a slightly different layout and another vellum paper with a little description of the lake. This was just one of those spots where I was just marveling at nature and it was so still a peaceful moment. And again, you'll see here is a full bleed photo of the lake and then the vellum paper across just adds another layer of elegance and simplicity to this book. And this is something that I couldn't have done with any of the photo books that I know of because they don't offer such feature. And to be honest, this is what made the photo book really difficult because you really have to think about where to use these vellum sheets because obviously when you fold the sheet into two, you have to use the vellum sheet on the other side of the signature as well. Some of my panorama shots, if you have panoramic shots, try to put them two or three on the page so they fill up nicely the space. By the way, this is my first photo book, which is Portrait and A4. Many reasons for that. The first one is because that was the easiest one for me to print in my printer and fold into two because I've got an A3 plus printer. But also I wanted to experiment with a more traditional book style and traditional books are usually portrait. They don't go lay flat. It's very rare when you see a traditional book in that format. And I actually had to come to the realization that this kind of uh, book style works really well with all kinds of photos, especially the portrait ones, but also with the uh, panorama shots. And I was always quite against this. I preferred using the square and landscape aspect ratios, but I'm really happy with the portrait as well. 
Just some photos on the way home and here is my first map of a city map and as you can see I chose a very minimalist map here just the streets and the shape of the city and you can see where my hotel was the Harrington's Hotel and I'm using the beige color for the maps throughout the map and again this is a photo from the garden of the hotel and my vellum paper goes across. I had very little time to explore Negumbo, only half a day before going on to Vietnam, so it was a very short trip, but some very nice pictures from the beach. It was a lovely day. And again, you can see here, 13th January, day two. So being consistent in your photo books, I think is a must if you want a nice classic look. If I started using a different font or a different layout for this page, it would look a bit messy to me, but again, I have an OCD, so for me, these things really matter. And then just a few photos from the hotel. And again, here is my Heritons Hotel. Just some titles on the vellum paper and my favorite shot from the hotel. Again, a very peaceful kind of vivid moment from the garden. And a double page spread. This was the sunset from the hotel before I went on to the airport to go to Vietnam. So last photo from Sri Lanka and here comes Vietnam. Again, the shape of the country and the vellum paper and the two locations I visited. And one of my favorite shots from Vietnam, a very vivid night market, beautiful. Here is the introduction to Hanoi. You can see now the color of the watercolor splash changes to kind of match the overall shades on the page. The first night I was just taking photos of people and Hanoi because I arrived quite late just before sunset. So I didn't really have a chance to take pictures of buildings. And you can see the new date here, 14th January, my birthday and day three. This was such a nice moment in the hotel because that was my birthday and they gave me some nice presents. It was very sweet of them and I was in a complete Zen mode. So I started meditating. I know I shouldn't have taken a photo, but you know, it's just to capture the moment. And here is a map of Hanoi, the old town district and the few things that I managed to visit that night. Again, on vellum paper. And here is San Joseph Cathedral. And the bridge and the little temple on the lake was a beautiful, beautiful evening with the lights. Here is another little montage of nighttime Hanoi, trying out the egg coffee, amazing meals, and just the lights of the city. And as you can see, again, this is in the middle of my signature, so I don't need to worry about um, the two pages matching up perfectly. Double page spread, again, the lake and the little description at the top. Going on to my wonderful Halong Bay cruise the next morning. So here is a little map of all the islands in Halong Bay, again on vellum paper, and my favorite shot of the sunset in Halong Bay. It was a beautiful cruise, you know, from the days when we could still travel. And here is again my description. And this was the first glimpse of the bay when I arrived in the harbor. It was absolutely magical and mystical. You could see the islands in the distance and we were just getting on our cruise. It was just a moment that you don't forget. Here are my meals. I was the only vegetarian on the boat. So they gave me like nine dishes because it was meant to be for a table of eight, but I was the only one at the table. It's a panorama shot of the bay. And here is the cruise just cruising around the islands. Unfortunately, it was getting quite cloudy and overcast and the sun was going down, so it was a bit dark and I couldn't blow up these photos any bigger because they looked quite grainy. And here is the cave that we visited on one of the islands. It was so beautiful with the many little lights. It was a huge cave. If you go to Halong Bay, you'll probably go and visit it too. Here is my next destination, Hong Kong. Again, Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, and the many different um, destinations. And my favorite photo from Hong Kong, from Victoria Harbor. I was very lucky in Hong Kong. The weather was amazing. The sky was crystal clear all the way through. So the views were breathtaking from everywhere I went to. This is my first glimpse of the city from the plane. It was beautiful. Exploring Kowloon and watching the sunset from Kowloon, uh, looking to the other side to Hong Kong Island and going on, just a little vanity photo from the harbor, the sun going down and taking some night photos. 
Again, you can use these as a double page spread, but I just wanted to kind of picture the whole harbour in different colours. So when you take many different shots of the same scene, then it's always good to do kind of a montage, almost like a film strip of um, the photos going after each other and the nighttime market. The next day I went for a small hiking to Aplai Chow. This is a small island just at the bottom of Hong Kong Island. And that's me sitting on top of the island. It was very difficult to get up and I was not in the right gear. But again, you can see day six, 17th January. And these are the photos from the top. You could see all the islands from there. It was again, a really great day. You could see very far. After I came down from the uh, hiking, I just went exploring Hong Kong Island and up to Victoria Peak, sticking with the white minimalist look here. Just a little description and a few more montages from Hong Kong Island. And the last couple of pages I dedicated to my hotel experience. I got myself the presidential suite at the uh, Grand Harbour uh, Hong Kong Hotel. And this was just a little treat for myself for my birthday. And it was one of the nicest suites I've ever been in. Um, it was a huge living room overlooking the harbour on all sides. They gave me again a nice birthday present. The bedroom was overlooking the harbour. It was just a very lush experience. And even the bathtub was overlooking the harbour. And when I get to the last page of my photo book, what you can see here is I made a little pocket for the end of the photo book where I can keep all my flight tickets, my subway cards and all the memorabilia I collected on this trip and my postcards and so on. So I always like these memorabilia pockets because then I can keep my things together with my photos. And that's again something I show in the how I made this book video. So that was the end of this photo book. I hope it gave you some ideas for your next project. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And don't forget to check back next week for my tutorial on how I made this photo book step by step from the beginning all the way to the final stages. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.